to Vemdalen. This is my own little piece of heaven and I try to come here at least twice a year to relax and reload my batteries. There is a clarity here that I have a hard time finding anywhere else and I swear even the coffee tastes better here. I don't know if it is the water or it's just in my head but whatever it is I like it. Vemdalen is also perfect for fishing and hunting. And today, I hope that I will catch the king of the mountain lakes, the white fish. Of course, there will be a lot of cooking today as well. First, a chantamal toast with a very special cheese. Then, a spicy and hearty soup and the white fish. I will prepare it in a way that you haven't seen before, I hope. But more about that later. Now you can understand why this is my secret place. It's not exactly easy to find. For my central toast, I'll use an ingredient which is very common here in the north of Scandinavia, the soft whey cheese. And we Scandinavians, we have been making this cheese in small cabins like this for centuries. Inside here, my friend Margaret, she's in her soft whey cheese zone, and that's good. Follow me. Hey, Magneta. This is a magical place. Margaret is making her soft whey cheese, and she has just begun. I will try to explain for you the whole process of making this soft whey cheese. First, you need milk, and we take the milk from our friends outside the cows, not the camera team. <laughs> then you heat the milk up to body temperature. And what I do to feel if it is the right temperature, I dip my finger. But Margaret here, she insists of using her elbow. <laughs> then you add the cheese rennet. Leave it for 20 minutes. Over that time, the milk will slowly start to separate into curds and whey. And it is the curds that you make cheese of and the whey that you make the soft whey cheese of. Look here. And now we just reduce the whey until we have the perfect consistency, the taste and the color. And this process don't take 10 minutes. It's more like four or five hours. But I can tell you, it's well worth it. Mm. Delicious. Now that I have my top secret ingredient, I can finally start preparing my first dish. Okay, we see soon. I 
use this software cheese a lot in stews and in sauces. I think it gives a very interesting sweet taste. Plus, it's lower in fat and we like that, don't we? So, here we have the chanterelles. And it's important when you fry chanterelles or any kind of mushroom that the frying pan is very hot. Because otherwise the chanterelles will start to boil in their own water. And then all the water will just be sucked out of them and they will lose shape and taste. So it's very important that your frying pan is hot. And also, when you clean your mushroom, don't rinse them under cold water. Just take a brush and brush them, because you don't want to add more water. Okay, so here we have two types of chanterelles. He's lonely. <laughs> or hungry, maybe. So the chanterelles goes in the pan. You can just divide the mushroom with your hands. Fresh rosemary, you got that here. There we go. My red chopped onion. The garlic. We just crush it with the knife, like that. So, now we can just smell this. You smell the rosemary, the garlic, which is perfect, the chanterelles. Lemon zest from one lemon. Apple. This is kacha apple, which is very common here in Sweden during this time of year. It's perfect because it can stand some heat. So I know that you can't buy this because it's a typical Swedish apple, but buy a Cortland apple or a Granny Smith. I have this apple in my garden, by the way. I'm very proud of that. But that isn't the issue now. <laughs> okay, so we just cut the apple into nice quarters. And we are going to mix them with the chanterelles just in the end because I don't want the apples to get mushy. I want them to be crunchy and have that special apple consistency. So we just cut them like this. Okay, so now we add the soft white cheese. A big spoon. And you can use Philadelphia cheese if you can't get this special cheese. And I don't think you can because it's so very typical Swedish. We season it with salt and pepper. The apples. Now I'm going to put this on just some white bread, but you can use it for for a meat or fish or whatever you want. You have the nice sweetness from the soft white cheese. You have the nice consistency from the apples. The chanterelle taste, flavor, and just salt and pepper, and the lemon zest. This is just a great combo. Okay, I hope Margaret is hungry, because I make a sandwich for her as well. We put ham in the bottom. Okay, so here we have the chanterel toast with the soft white cheese, perfect for lunch. And the only thing that's missing right now is Margaret, so 
I better go and get her. Margareta! Hey, Mott! For centuries, the farmers of the north of Sweden have moved their livestock from farms in the village to the remote pastures of the cabins. People and cattle stayed there during summer until fall, and the homecoming was celebrated in a big way. has developed into haven for those of you who enjoy energetic holidays. Many people around here take their vacation now rather than during the popular summertime. At this time of year, dinner is served the old-fashioned way. This way of fishing is called planner board fishing, and I am told that this is the best way of catching the bashful whitefish. The whitefish mainly live in cold, deep mountain lakes, such as this one, Uxjön, situated 800 meters above the sea level. Often the whitefish is caught by trout anglers because the two species are found in the same waters. But many anglers mistake the whitefish for suckers or unedible fish and toss them away. Well, then they really miss out on a good treat. Although we kept on for several hours, we didn't catch any fish. But fortunately, we met someone who had more luck than us. So here we are back at the cabin. My friends will arrive in a few hours, so I better start cooking. you a hearty and spicy soup and that is a goulash soup that's yummy isn't it and the white fish I will prepare on that fire over there but you will see more about that later so for my goulash soup I will use ground beef if you want to do it the more authentic way you use stew beef but I think if you use this ground beef it's a quicker way of making the soup so now we just add butter and oil in the casserole For my glass soup, I will use these ingredients. Celeriac, red pepper, potatoes, the ground beef, you know that, tomato paste. This is just finely chopped onion. Garlic and some dry spices. What I do first, I just take all my vegetables and start to saute them. onion, the ground beef, tomato paste, the garlic, crush it with the back of your knife.
The difference between fry and saute is that if you fry something, you want it to be golden brown. But here, I don't want it to be golden brown. I just want to warm it up so all the flavor here can just explode into the soup. So, I almost forgot my dry spices. May rum. Cumin. If you make a goulash soup, you have to use cumin. Four and a half cups of water. One can of crushed tomatoes. Two cubes of chicken stock. And why on earth am I using chicken stock when this is beef? Well, I just like it better. <laughs> That's uh, my explanation of it. So now we are almost done. We just leave the soup now for 20 minutes, put the lid on and then what we do, I just spice it up with salt, pepper and a pinch of sugar. I have to keep this fire burning because I'm going to use it later for the whitefish. But also, I just want to warm my hands because it's quite cold here. Now I'm a bit warmer. I have to taste my soup. It has been boiling for 20 minutes. It's a good taste. Well, I think it needs at least 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So, the whitefish, it's already cleaned. And that's perfect. Now, I think this is the best part of this cooking because I'm going to use the nature out here in the wilderness. I'm going to stuff it with juniper twigs, lemons, and then I'm going to wrap it in newspaper and drown it in the stream. But first I need juniper twigs. And here is my juniper bush. That's so convenient. I think I just use a pair of gloves because the bush is quite prickly. So you just hang on for one second. Here we are. There is old wives saying that if you fix this twig outside your door, you will keep all the witches away. Well, I read this in a very old book and I don't know if it's true, but there are lots because juniper is delicious. I'm going to use a mortar, but it isn't absolutely necessary, actually. It's just that all the flavors will get out much easier. Two cloves of garlic. Lemon, oil, salt, and pepper. Fresh thyme, mash it together. I have to use my hands here. We stuff the fish with all the juniper berries, the lemons, the garlic. Wrap it in, in newspaper. And then when I put it on the fire, or the embers of the fire, the wet paper, the soaked paper, will prevent it from burning. It will work, I promise you.
There we go. And now we drown it in the stream. I just love the wilderness. I have to drench them. It's important that they are completely soaked, otherwise they will start to burn in the fire. Perfect timing, there are my friends. And now we just put the package on the embers of fire and my friends here, they have to watch it. It will take around 30 minutes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Okay. Okay, so back to the sauce. Here we have sour cream. The cloud berries. <laughs> Fine chopped dill, salt, and white pepper. And I have to admit that in the beginning I thought this combination was completely out. I couldn't understand it, but now it's just delicious. So, okay, we taste it. Perfect. The soup is boiling and done. We just season it with salt, pepper, and some sugar. It's ready. You want? Come here. Come here. Hello, King. Can we go and play? Will you 